Hey, it's Shannon Popkin welcoming you back for day three of the five C challenge. And today we're talking about no correcting, no correcting. Now the number one response that I get when I talk about this five C challenge is, oh my goodness, if I take a, a five day break or, you know, an extended break from correcting my kids, what in the world is going to happen? So yeah, you've got a point there, right? So let's talk about it. Um, correcting is pointing out or marking errors, according to dictionary.com. Uh, so first of all, not all correcting is motivated by control. We're looking at these different, these five C's and asking like, am I trying to control things here? And, um, not all correcting is that's not always the case. Uh, for instance, I was in the middle East and, um, was talking about control and surrendering control to God. And like these, uh, I gave, I often give these five ways to surrender control to God. And so one of them was cap the red pen, like stop trying to correct everybody. And this sweet, uh, middle Eastern woman came up and she said, you know, I work at a language school and my job is to tell people when they're pronouncing things incorrectly, like, are you saying I shouldn't do that? And I was like, no, 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 please correct. You know, the, the people that are learning, um, the language, like, <laughs> no, don't stop correcting that. That's, that's the kind of correcting that's super helpful. So, I mean, how are you going to tell the difference, right? How are you going to tell the difference between the wrong kind and the right kind? Let me give you a few examples first of what correcting looks like that I think would probably fit into this category of, um, trying to control. So like, for instance, when the kids are making their gingerbread houses and you're correcting how they're doing it, or, um, you're correcting somebody with what they're going to wear to the Christmas Eve service. You're correcting your husband because he's falling asleep constantly during the Christmas Eve service. Um, you're correcting your father-in-law cause he's not wearing a mask in your house or out in public, or you're correcting your sister-in-law because she's insisting that your father wear a mask or father-in-law wear a mask or not wear a mask or whatever it is. Um, you know, correcting your husband because he hasn't gotten the driveway shoveled and the guests are going to be there soon or correcting somebody for opening gifts out of order, not waiting their turn. Um, correcting your husband for buying a gift that was too expensive or correcting him for buying a gift that wasn't expensive enough you get the idea. Do you see the difference when you're trying to control things, uh, and the difference between that and just trying to be helpful? Um, here's a starting point for telling the difference between, am I, am I just trying to control things or am I just trying to be helpful? If, do you have a Bible verse that would support what you're saying here? Um, so like that list that I just read you, do you have any, do you have a, a verse that would support what you're thinking? If there's no verse, then you probably are trying to, um, you know, play God, <laughs> right? Like if there's not a verse about it, God probably would have put a verse about it. If there was, if it was that important to him, we do have our list of 10 commandments. And I think sometimes when we tr are trying to, um, correct everybody, we're really trying to play God. We're trying to set things up according, you know, set up the universe according to our preferences and what, what we think, um, the way that we think things should be. And, and really we're trying to replace God instead of honoring him in the lives of other people. And so here's the thing, God does not need for us to stand in for him <laughs> and the people around us would appreciate it if we stopped. Um, so yeah, I think if, if there isn't a verse then it's probably trying to control. But what about this? What about when somebody else ha does have a verse for what they're thinking and you have your verse um, <laughs> for what you're thinking is right and, and your verses are different. And I think that the mask example is a perfect example because, you know, we have the, the verse like, love your neighbor, be kind, you know, wear your mask. And then um, we have other people who are saying, don't fear, you know, don't need to wear a mask. And both are true. And if we're only listening to the verse that we want to hold on to and not anybody else's verse, like that's really the opposite of being a surrendered woman of God. So I think, um, you know, surrendering is just letting God be God and, and closing our mouth rather than having to correct everybody. So let me just talk a moment to the moms who are listening, because we do have some verses, don't we moms? 
Um, here are a couple Proverbs 22, six says train up a child in the way he should go. And Proverbs 13, 24 says, whoever spares the rod hates the son, but he who loves him is diligent to discipline him. Discipline is corrective, isn't it? So please, if you're doing the five C challenge, please do tell your toddler to stop before they run out into the road or touch the hot stove. Like we're not saying don't correct uh, your toddler, but also consider the way that your desire for control could affect your parenting. Um, I think that when we are consistently repeating and adding intensity and raising our voices and, uh, you know, correcting, 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 often we transition from godly parenting to controlling parenting. Um, and I know this firsthand, I have been a controlling mom at times and Ephesians six, four says fathers and mothers don't provoke your children to anger. So I think that this applies to, um, constantly correcting, sometimes taking a break from repeated corrections is actually good for my heart um, and the heart of my kids. So just taking a break, like they already know, <laughs> they already know what I'm going to say before I even say it. Sometimes um, I used an example in uh, control girl of doing the five C challenge. And one of my kids was mouthing off during, um, like during breakfast. And I was like, what am I going to do? And I said, like, you could hear the bait, the bagel toasting in the, in the toaster. It was so quiet. And then my child like said, I'm sorry, mom, that was disrespectful. And I'm like, Oh my goodness. Um, let me give you another example. One time, I think this was a couple of years ago during the five C challenge. One of my kids, I got a phone call from school the day during the five C challenge. I got this phone call and, um, I'm thinking, oh my goodness, like, what am I going to do? Because our policy at school is if you get in trouble at school, um, you get in double trouble at home. So what, what am I going to do if I'm not correct, if I'm taking a break from any verbal correction with my child? And so here's what I just decided to do instead. Um, when my kid came home, I just decided to ask questions. And so, and ask the Holy spirit, like pray that the Holy spirit would do the correcting. So I asked questions like, so what happened? And why do you think your teacher was upset? And what do you think, um, that you did that was wrong? Um, can you think of any verses that would apply to this? And what would you like to say to the Lord about this? And, um, what do you think that you should say to your teacher? And what do you think would be a good consequence? I just asked questions and somebody might call this a corrective, you know, conversation, but it wasn't like any of the corrective conversations that I have ever had with any of my kids, because, you know, in one of those big crisis moments of, of correcting, um, I think it was actually more effective because I wasn't, you know, imposing and, and my child like answered all of the questions and was completely remorseful and wrote a note to the teacher and then, you know, came up with a consequence that was probably more severe than what I would have chosen. And this all happened without me raising my voice or like pointing to some verse in the Bible or, you know, pounding my fist. Um, sometimes I think that in parenting, we do so much talking that we don't make room for the voice of God. So here's what we re need to remember. The voice of the Holy spirit is far more effective than our voices. Uh, so I would encourage you take a break from correcting your child. Just take a little break from that and ask the spirit to work in, in your place. Um, and, and then maybe some questions to ask before you do correct someone. Does, does she already know what I'm about to say? Um, and have I given this person an opportunity to hear from the Holy spirit, or am I too busy filling the space with all the words that I would like to say? And is my heart filled with love and compassion and kindness toward this person? Or am I correcting her because I want control? Hope that you'll hold on to those uh, questions and just, um, be asking like, Lord, am I taking your place? here. I want to let you be the one uh, who corrects because you do a far better job than I ever could.